y'all. This is Blake. I'm here to review Devil. Now, I've actually seen a few movies in the last few weeks, but I haven't been able to review them, but just as a quick rundown. I did like Machete when it tried to be an exploitation film. When it tried to be more, I felt that it sort of fumbled and I thought it was too ambitious for its own good, but it was still really fun. And Resident Evil Afterlife is either really bad or really cool. I really did like the visual style, but at the same time, the script was really, really stupid and full of holes. I also just recently watched The Town, even though it's obviously not the type of movie I'd review. And that was good. Not as haunting as Gone Baby Gone, but it was still, I thought, a really well done movie. But now we got Devil. Now everybody gets all pissed off at the idea of M. Night Shyamalan still making movies. But here's my philosophy on all that. I will always remember a filmmaker for their best movie, not their worst. I will always remember George Romero for Night, Dawn, and Day of the Dead, but not for Diary or Survival of the Dead. I will always remember M. Night for Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs, not for Lady in the Water and The Last Airbender. I think certain people get too caught up in their hatred of their newer films to the point where it's almost as if they hate the newer ones more than that they respect the older ones. Like, it seems like everybody loves to bitch about the Star Wars prequels. I hear about the bitching of those movies so much that I begin to wonder if those people even still like the original ones. In the case of Devil, it both inspires hope yet worry. Because I always felt that the reason why M. Night Shyamalan has faltered is his ego. When he first made uh, The Sixth Sense, Signs and Unbreakable, he wasn't the top dog yet. He was working with people who were able to help him with his weaknesses and also, furthermore, uh, help him with his strengths. But by the time he did The Village, he was pretty much the number one guy. He had full creative control and pretty much had the answer to nobody. And his ego pretty much reached its peak with Lady in the Water. Uh, besides the movie itself, he actually refused to let his initial studio back it because they didn't like the idea, even though they said, go ahead and do it. So he ended up taking it to another studio who didn't even try to pressure him into not doing that movie. And unfortunately, he's yet to figure that out. I think when it comes to creativity, and I do think that M. Night is a really creative guy, I think you need to be careful about filtering what's good and what's bad. Uh, for example, Wes Craven. A Nightmare on Elm Street had all his creativity working for the film. I don't know if he had other people helping him and choosing which ideas worked best, but that movie just was creativity at its finest. But in the case of, let's say, Shocker, also a very creative movie with a lot of creative ideas, but it just doesn't work. They don't feel like they fit the tone of the movie often, and it just kind of derails itself. So, uh, in my opinion, a good filmmaker is one that not only has these good ideas, but is able to listen to the advice of others to filter out the bad. This is George Lucas's problem. When he made the first few Star Wars movies, he was just, like I said, one of the guys. He was open to all advice, and the end result was that his movies all turned out really good. But with the prequels, nobody countered him because he freaking George Lucas. So it was just all his ideas, and all his weaknesses pretty much dominated those films. So I thought that taking a step back and working as an executive producer was a really good idea. Unfortunately, his ego doesn't seem to have changed. Because just look at the marketing from the mind of M. Night Shyamalan and then the studios, and I think even the subtitle of the movie was like The Night Chronicles. I mean, Jesus, that is definitely ego. He barely had anything to do with this movie, and his name is still being whored in every way possible. Um, but the movie actually turned out to be pretty good. I don't know if M. Night ended up resulting in that, but it does actually feel like an M. Night movie at heart, back when his movies were still good. This actually is very much like signs in terms of tone and themes. Um, it's not quite as good as signs, but I thought it was still pretty good. What's interesting about it is that it feels like a drama that was converted into a horror film. Now, just think about this if you've seen the movie. Cut out the obvious horror bits, tweak around certain aspects, tone down the violence, and you pretty much have a drama. I don't mind that, because that usually uh, means you're going to have stronger characters with more of an arc. For example, movies like The Changeling is pretty much a drama that was converted into a horror film. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, because I actually think that most dramas would benefit from being converted into horror films. And this both works for Devil, though, and against it. Like I said, what works for it is 
definitely makes characters who are interesting, uh, sympathetic, they have arcs. Actually, I take that back. They're not really sympathetic, but the ones that are supposed to be sympathetic are sympathetic. But the majority of the cast is intentionally unlikable. Um, the themes I thought were really interesting. I love that final line that pretty much summarizes the whole philosophy behind it. And it just feels like a surprisingly strong movie. But what works against it is that it's just too short to be a drama. I mean, it's like 80 minutes long. It feels like it, feel, feels like it cut out the meat that could have made it a really effective drama. On the other hand, it's horror aspects. There was some good suspense and some nice jumpy moments, but it never really hit hard in terms of being scary. Movies like, for example, Paranormal Activity. That scared me pretty badly, um, and it stayed with me a long time after I saw it. But it's one of those movies, on the other hand, that if it doesn't scare you, it's going to bore the crap out of you. With the case of Devil, at least you can admire certain aspects of it, even if it doesn't scare you. But like I said, it, it didn't stay with me after I saw it. it. just I had a few jump moments, but nothing too scary. Like when it really tries to be scary, it doesn't usually succeed. Like that scene where the devil appears behind the guy when he's flashing the cell phone. Not scary. But it was still, I thought, even though it doesn't succeed at being both a drama and a horror, it pulls enough out from each genre to where I thought it was able to hold its own. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I thought it was interesting, a little bit frightening. The suspense was really good. And all in all, it, I, was, I was impressed. It felt kind of like a watered-down version of Signs. Although even that maybe is a little harsh. But I thought it was surprisingly impressive and surprisingly deep for a horror film, too. But the fact that it tries to be both horror and drama, I could see why a lot of people are indifferent to it. Because most likely when a movie tries to be go both ways, they're usually going to underwhelm fans of either. But like I said, I usually appreciate when movies try to uh, join genres together. Even if they don't completely exceed, I admire the time. And I, like I said, I enjoyed the movie. Um, the, guy, the person who directed it was the guy who did a Quarantine, and I thought that movie had its good moments, but at the same time, most of those good moments were pretty much lifted from Wreck, which Quarantine was a remake of, so this is his first truly good movie, I thought. Um, so while I think it does add a little bit of respect to M. Night's name, the real victory, I think, goes to the screenwriter and the director, not M. Night. So I'd recommend it. If you want to read my full review, just check the link in my description, and... That is all. See you later.